2025, a crack team of electrical specialists was assigned to stress test advanced solar storage technology. These men didn't follow the manual because there wasn't one. Operating out of an undisclosed test facility, they push equipment beyond the limits, so you don't have to. If you have a battery and you want to know what it can really handle, and if you can find them, maybe you can watch the E-Team. Across the world, there's a massive boom in battery storage, all driven by the rise of solar PV. From huge grid-scale banks packed into shipping containers to smaller batteries tucked away in cupboards, garages and lofts in homes everywhere. But with that growth has come concern. Fires linked to battery failures have made headlines, sometimes with catastrophic results. New regulations are being introduced and insurance companies, they're clamping down hard on where these batteries can be installed. So just how safe are they? Are we putting ourselves or others at risk when we install, transport or even own these systems. Well, we decided to find out the only way we know how by putting one to the test and trying to destroy it. We got our hands on a home storage battery, reasonably priced and fully charged to its maximum capacity of 5.2 kilowatt hours. Then we set up our first test. Using a hybrid inverter, we pulled a serious discharge current around 50 amps, pushing the battery into real world operating conditions. But here's where it gets interesting. What would happen if someone accidentally disconnected connected a battery terminal while the system is under load. To simulate this dangerous scenario, we built a custom test rig, a stepper motor control jig designed to slowly pull apart the battery terminal and cable connector while the current is still flowing. Would it arc? Would it fail? Or something worse? Let's find out. Disclaimer, the following tests were performed by trained individuals fully aware of the risks, side effects, and possible unexpected outcomes. Do not attempt to recreate these tests at home unless you enjoy fires, explosions, or unexpected visits from your insurance company. Battery behavior can differ significantly depending on technology, design, and state of charge. Results may not be typical. Viewer discretion and common sense are strongly advised. Three, two, one. With the rig assembled and safety systems in place, we started the test. As the stepper motor slowly pulled the connector apart, the current continued to flow. 50 amps being delivered straight from the battery, but then nothing. No spark, no arc, no smoke. The system simply shut down. We repeated the test several times expecting some kind of reaction, but every time the same result. Silent disconnection, no obvious signs of stress or damage. We inspected the terminals and connectors closely. No burn marks, no melted contacts, no evidence of arcing. Perhaps this behavior isn't accidental. Maybe the manufacturer has deliberately designed the system to prevent exactly this kind of tomfoolery. 50 amps is nothing compared to the current we might expect under full short circuit conditions. The kind of thing that could happen if you quite literally threw a spanner in the works. To simulate this kind of extreme fault, we assembled a large knife switch fitted with a remotely triggered safety solenoid designed to release the blade and create a direct short circuit. With a growing sense of nervous trepidation, we connected the switch mechanism directly across the battery terminals. The safety circuit was armed, we retreated to a safe distance. Everything was ready and then with eyes half closed, the switch dropped and once again, nothing happened. Well, that was a bit of a damp squib, wasn't it? It quickly became clear that somewhere inside the battery, the electronics, or more specifically, the battery management system was stepping in to prevent a short circuit. So it was time to open up the battery and remove the protection. Inside, we were immediately struck by just how much electronics were packed into the unit. Multiple circuit boards, layers of monitoring systems, and temperature sensors everywhere. Clearly, someone is quite concerned about keeping this battery cool. But today, we weren't here to admire the engineering. One by one, we carefully removed the protection circuits, leaving only the bare cells. Now we understood our enemy. Is it the red lead we pull out? <laughs> red or green? If you went there and there, but you're just very close to shorting. A quick check with the multimeter confirmed the batteries were live and ready, and with the protection stripped away, it was time for the real test. We were convinced that this time we'd finally get a reaction. The short circuit rig was triggered once more, and once again, nothing. The only sound, a growing sense of frustration within the team. We inspected the setup, Everything was connected exactly as planned. The battery, however, seemed determined to survive. Unable to force an electrical failure, we turned our attention to something the manufacturer clearly is 
worried about temperature. It was time to turn up the heat, enter the propane powered blowtorch with Matt stationed safely at the gas bottle. Griff carefully reached in to light the torch. By this point, most of the rest of the team had quietly relocated to a much safer distance. The flame was applied directly to the battery casing. After a few minutes, we thought we might finally have the start of a fire, but on closer inspection, it appeared to be just the plastic from the internal wiring harness starting to burn away. After 10 minutes, we turned off the blowtorch and the faint signs of fire soon died away on their own. The battery itself remained surprisingly unfazed. At this stage, it's fair to ask, why is this battery proving so difficult to destroy? One major reason is chemistry. The battery we're testing uses lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, a type of lithium battery that's become a popular choice for home energy storage. Compared to the lithium ion batteries used in phones, laptops, and electric cars, LFP is much more stable. That's because it stores less energy in the same amount of space, but it also handles heat and damage far better. Standard lithium ion batteries pack in more energy, which makes them great when size and weight matter, but that also makes them more volatile. If they're damaged or have a fault, they can release flammable gases under pressure. Gases that can ignite suddenly and cause serious fires or explosions. To show the difference, we set up a small-scale test at the eFix Fire Safety Test Centre. The team approached this one with a healthy amount of caution and a very long reach on the puncture tool. First, we took a lithium iron phosphate battery from an emergency light and drove a steel screw straight through it. The result? A bit of heat, some venting, but no flames, no explosion no drama. Then we repeated the test with a typical lithium ion battery from a mobile device. This time the reaction was instant. The cell burst open, released a cloud of flammable gas and ignited almost immediately, burning until the battery was completely destroyed. And that's the key difference. Both battery types can fail, but LFP is far more forgiving. And when paired with a proper battery management system, it becomes one of the safest options for home storage. Still, we weren't ready to give up just yet. With the battery still refusing to give us any real drama, we decided it was time for one final test. The countdown began. Three, two, one. Finally, the moment of destruction. Fragments flew in all directions, foam debris rained down, and for a brief moment it looked like we'd finally managed to destroy the battery, but not quite. In reality, the battery itself was completely unharmed. What you just saw was the result of a small explosive charge placed beneath the battery, purely for dramatic effect. The only real casualty was the sheet of foam insulation board the battery had been resting on. After all our testing, high current, short circuits, heat, and even a controlled explosion, the battery remained impressively intact. It turns out with the right chemistry and proper safety systems in place, modern home storage batteries are a lot tougher than many people might imagine. Got a theory about why we couldn't produce a short circuit or a question about battery safety you'd like the E-Team to investigate? Drop it in the comments, we're always up for a challenge, and if you'd like to see what happened when over 300 kilowatt hours of battery storage were installed in a shed and the unexpected problems that caused, click the video on screen now.